blood which is on blood clotting of course when you which is, what is blood clotting when you injure or you cut yourself the the blood is the blood forms a clot in order to stop the bleeding it means that the blood is it changed from from liquid liquid into a solid something very important to understand the process to understand what causes that and what are the symptoms how we treat that is it dangerous or safe of course all those crucial points will be given to you right up after this short break with our doctor here in the studio stay tuned Back to you, our dear viewers. So um, now it's time for our main segment of the day, uh, which is uh, a bit medical segment. It's our discussion for the day with Hanan. Hanan? Yes, we will start the first main discussion, like I mentioned before. It's on the World Day for Blood Clotting. With our guest here in the studio, Dr. Mohammed Ashif, who is the King Fahad Medical, uh, who is the consultant internal medicine, hematology, and the coagulation of blood vessels, a chairman of the organizing committee of the World Day for Diseases of the Blood Clotting. Assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Good morning. Alaikum assalam warahmatullahi Good morning for you and for the reviewers. It's a great pleasure and honor being with you here. Hmm. And uh, Doctor, from the beginning, let me ask you about the definition. What is the blood clotting thing? Good. So we uh, blood uh, clotting disorders and there is a blood clotting uh, process. It is a physiological, it is a normal. So everybody, there is no, any human can live without clotting process. Otherwise, if you have a minor cut wound, the bleeding will non -stop, non stop and eventually die. So that's why we have a clotting process. This is physiological to stop bleeding. Mm -hmm. But what happened, so you have clotting factors, about 13 factors, it's a cascade of reactions that lead to formation of blood clot that seal the wound. We call it a blood, uh, uh, plug, plug the wound. What happened? Sometimes you have this clotting process. It is excessive, non-stop. It doesn't only stop the wound, but it close or block the vessel. So it could, you know, blood clot, we call it. That's why it is physiological process, but there is fine balance. So with the balance, we have to have clotting process on the other hand, we have what we call natural anticoagulant. This is in, uh, in layman meaning it is a process that like a breaks 
you know, to regulate the clotting process. Otherwise, if we don't have our natural, you know, uh, uh, breaks, like we call it protein S, protein C, antithermine 3, they are proteins that act to, you know, regulate or make, you know, the fine balance of blood clotting. We call it homeostasis. Mm -hmm. So that's the uh, blood clotting uh, process, or we call it coagulation, medical terms. Mm -hmm. Dr. Muhammad, uh, what about the kinds of the blood clotting? Uh, I guess there are uh, some kinds you could enlighten. Excellent. That's why we, we the word thrombosis day 2016. Thrombosis or blood clotting, it can occur in the veins or arteries. So we have the arteries, you know, the, uh, the heart pumps blood mm. through arteries, which are the tubes that take blood to all organs and tissues. So this is arteries. And major clots that occur in artery is the, in the brain, we call it stroke or mini stroke TIA. And you have in the heart, we call it heart attack or myocardial infarction. And we have in the legs, arterial system, we call it peripheral arterial disease. This is the arterial side. And we have on the other side of the coin, we have the venous blood clot. The venous blood clot occur in the vast majority of cases, I will say 95% of cases, the legs, uh, veins, we call it deep vein, uh, D, DVT or deep vein thrombosis. Blood clot in the veins of the leg and usually deep inside the muscles, not the one that superficial or under the surface of the skin, we call it varicose veins. So this is a deep uh, vein thrombosis or blood clot inside the veins, sometimes might break off and travel through bloodstream, through the heart to the lungs, mm -hmm. cause uh, pulmonary embolism or uh, clot in the lung. So this is, we call it collectively called venous thromboembolism. So we have other kind of venous uh, clots, which is uh, less common, rare, uh, like uh, cerebral in the brain veins, or could be in the abdomen, it could be in the, that blood, you know, uh, veins uh, supplying the intestine. Uh, we call it mesenteric or in the spleen, splenic or in the liver, hepatic. So no single blood vessel is immune from blood clots. So there are blood clots more common than other kinds. Mm -hmm. So our the take home message from this Awareness Day, mainly focusing on the venous uh, blood clots. Okay. But before we focus on the venous blood clots, uh, like you mentioned, uh, of course, if we have this general outlook about the different types of blood clots, can any of them reach a stage where where it become very dangerous for the health of a human being, or no? Everything is under control. Good. That's why always we say prevention is better than cure, and one stitch in time can save uh, one stitch uh, in time can save nine. So the important if prevention is the mainstay and the focus we have to prevent blood clots top blood clot by putting the preventive measures number two if we don't prevent we have to diagnose early diagnose early it will prevent the complications for example the blood clot in the leg veins dvt if we diagnose it early we can prevent complication can prevent death because blood clot in the leg if travels to the lung can cause pulmonary embolism and can kill 10 percent i mean one out of 10 who have blood clot in the lung can die so early diagnosis prompt uh, initiation of uh, therapy blood thinners it can prevent uh, complications so we have to prevent if we cannot prevent we have to diagnose early so to prevent mostly, complications mostly it starts in the legs definitely as yes as far as I understand. yes Mm. Mm. And doctor, um, uh, if you can tell us about the percentage here in the kingdom okay. and worldwide and if we are above or below average. Sure, definitely, because I think figures uh, speak louder than, okay, yeah. just theoretical. Uh, blood clot, I would say this is the leading, leading cause of death and disabili disability worldwide. Worldwide, I, uh, we have 10 million, 10 million cases of blood clot in the legs and lung occur in Europe and United States. And uh, three million people die worldwide from venous blood clot. Or, and uh, there's a study that is very, it's landmark study, very important, showed that uh, death from blood clots, mainly the uh, pulmonary embolism, 
exceed uh, death from breast cancer, prostate cancer, road traffic accident, and AIDS combined together. Wow. This is in Europe and US. You might say in Saudi Arabia, it's different, yes. If we want to put it in the context of our community, road traffic accident or motor vehicle accident is number one killer. However, we are specialists in thrombosis, okay, or blood clots. We are seeing a lot of cases. The problem, we are lacking our local data, local statistics. In our center, we are doing extensive research. It's ongoing, probably one or two years, we'll have more uh, local data. Otherwise, we are relying on the international uh, data. So that's very important, uh, I mean, the scary numbers. That's why we need to raise awareness. That's why the importance of the, you know, uh, conducting uh, awareness days, they send a critical reminder for people. Please, uh, okay, you have to aware about this disease prevented and uh, diagnosed early. And okay. many, many people unfortunately underestimate it or don't think of it as something very, very dangerous for the Definitely. human being. But before we go on a report, let me ask you this question. Uh, is it uh, hereditary? Can we inherit such a disease of course, yes. or not? Of course, yes. Mm -hmm. It is always we say, yes, it is hereditary or familial uh, disease. All you say genetics load the gun, but environment pulls the trigger. So you can have the genetic predisposition if you have like protein A or protein C deficiency, but you can prevent the disease by adopting a healthy lifestyle, by uh, exercising, by you know uh, getting rid of excess weight, by not smoking, by not drinking alcohol. So you can have the genetic you know uh, disposition or family history but you have to avoid it. So you can, you can prevent, you know, the trigger, which is the gun. That's important, family is important, but we can prevent the disease, mm -hmm. okay. So having the control is the main key, actually, Definitely. towards a better health. Dr. Mohammed will take a short break, so our dear viewers, we'll see this report regarding our topic, and we'll be back with Dr. Mohammed to talk more regarding blood clots, stay with us. Even under physiological conditions, a small tear can appear in the wall of a blood vessel. In order to prevent blood loss, platelets and coagulation factors such as the pivotal factor 10, acting in a coordinated manner, close this wound. The platelets are responsible for a first sealing of the tear. Then, a number of coagulation factors are activated leading to the formation of fibrin strands which stabilize the growing clot. These processes can also be triggered inappropriately and play a major role in the pathology of ACS, VTE and AF. Thromboembolic disorders can affect both types of blood vessels. Arterial or white clots are primarily triggered by the rupture of an atherosclerotic plaque. Arterial clots are platelet rich. Venous or red clots on the other hand mainly consist of red blood cells and fibrin. Vascular injury, hypercoagulability of the blood and venous stasis play a crucial role in their development. It is important to note that the formation of both types of clots, arterial and venous, always involves platelets as well as coagulation factors. Welcome back after this short report and now it's time to continue the interesting discussion about the blood clots with our doctor here in the studio, Dr. Mohammed Sheikh. Dr. Mohammed, during the break we were talking about the causes. So can you please highlight that? Excellent. So the causes, we summarize it in uh, three main causes and under that category we can break further. So there are, uh, you have the blood flowing should be flowing in the vessel. If you have any sluggish circulation, 
or slowness of the blood flow that increase the risk of blood clot. If you have any damage to the vessel, especially the vessel is very complex. The, the inner, uh, the lining, okay, the inner part or lining of the vessel, we call it endothelium. If there is any damage, it can cause increase the risk of blood clot. Again, number three, if you have a change in the components of blood, like if we have uh, red blood cells, we have platelets, we have uh, proteins, clotting proteins, fibrin, all they have fine balance. If there is excess in anyone, it can, like protein S or protein C, it can cause blood clot. So under the, uh, the, uh, the stasis, we call it stasis or sluggish circulation, uh, you have important any uh, immobility, any uh, immobilization. Mm -hmm. For example, if you get hospitalized, at, uh, it does increase the risk of uh, DVT because of immobilization. Surgery, surgery very important risk factor, especially uh, there are certain uh, kinds of surgery it can increase the risk more like especially lower uh, uh, limb or leg uh, fracture surgery, hip fracture surgery, knee, hip replacement surgery, spine surgery. Why? Why, why is specifically that those, uh, that those kinds of surgeries increase the risk of blood clots? Excellent. They can increase the risk about 40 to 60 percent without prevention, without preventing measure because of the extensive manipulation of the limb, the vessels, because if you want to replace the, uh, the knee or the hip, they will be exposing the tissues and might be manipulation of the vessel, clamping, they might clamp, okay, so decrease uh, bleeding, so it can increase the risk of the blood clot. Hospitalization or mm. uh, for any reason can increase the risk. Another kind of immobility, or uh, if you are traveling uh, transatlantic or long haul flights, more than six, eight hours, again can cause you know uh, sluggish uh, circulation. That's important. If you have a fracture of the leg and put cast, so uh, plaster cast immobilization, it does increase the risk. So this is one aspect. The other aspect, if you have uh, damage to the vessel patient if they after hospitalization you know uh, they might get catheters any catheter inside the vein we can central venous catheter especially intensive care unit it can increase the risk again the surgery can damage as you mentioned damage the vessel uh, uh, that's you know underlying this you know trauma any accident motor vehicle accident can damage the vessel the other change in the blood components like birth control pills pregnancy postpartum uh, hereditary factors like protein S, protein C, connected to disease like autoimmune uh, disorders, uh, systemic globus erythematosus, or you have antiphospholipid syndrome. We talk about one episode about antiphospholipid syndrome, mm -hmm. uh, Pasha disease. There are many risk factors, but very important risk factors, they interplay with each other. So you have family history, for example, and you have a patient who is who has family history of uh, protein S deficiency. But she, after she take birth control pill mm -hmm. that contain estrogen can augment or increase the risk. So you have this one, we call it, you know, interplay or synergistic effect between more than one risk factor. Yes, and Dr. Mohammed, um, we have a phone call regarding this topic, but talk about oral hygiene. So Excellent. it's a bit associated. Uh, we'll take this call with um, Dr. Sarah Radi, the oral hygienist at King Fahd Medical City. Assalamu alaikum. Good morning, Dr. Sarah. Doctor? Hello? Hello? I don't hear. Actually, um, I don't hear the call, so uh, so far we've been waiting for Dr. Sarah Radi to talk more about the um, oral hygienist, uh, uh, oral um, care on also uh, the patients uh, with um, uh, blood uh, uh, blood clotting. So, Dr. Sarah, do you hear me? Yes. All right. Hello. Uh, do Dr. Sarah, uh, let me ask you about the problems that are faced. Uh, 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 as you are um, uh, an oral hygienist at King uh, Fahad Medical City, uh, please tell us more about the problems that are faced by those with the blood clotting. Yeah, we are treating patients with uh, clotting problems mm -hmm. uh, that they're receiving anticoagulants uh, antithrombotic uh, medications. Uh, those patients, unfortunately, in other places, um, they stop their medication before uh, or during uh, the dental uh, 
appointment that would make them or um, put them in a higher risk uh, to get a, a clot that is threatening their life. Um, what we are doing here in Kingpad Medical City Dental Department, we are continuing um, the medication uh, because that um, cannot uh, can be managed during and after the patient. Uh, before the, uh, the visit of dental um, uh, appointment, we request uh, the INR um, test lab. It's a normalized uh, a ratio uh, that will uh, determine uh, the therapeutic range of the uh, cl uh, blood clotting. Mm -hmm. uh, we are treating the patient um, until 3.5. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the normal uh, normalized ratio is going to be one for the normal people, but those people need to be uh, to have them higher because they, they are in um, uh, clotting risk. So we are treating patients uh, in therapeutic range, which is 3.5. Um, there is many uh, medications. Uh, we are different, uh, differential, differentialized between them, uh, like warfarin, uh, which is all of them must be uh, continuous. Uh, warfarin is the one that we it's need the INR test. Other uh, medications like Bladex, uh, Enixaburin, and uh, Rivaroxaban, Dibigitran, uh, even aspirin, uh, they don't need to be interrupted. Mm -hmm. And uh, we have been done in a study, um, uh, and it's continued since two years ago, um, uh, with only one incidence of lead for bleeding of patients on anti-thrombotic medication out of 291 mm -hmm. patient visits. Uh, the concluded that is anti-thrombotic medication can be safely continued, mm -hmm. uh, and there is no incidence of bleeding after the procedure. Um, while undergoing the oral surgery uh, or any uh, minor baby treated with uh, hemostatic agent. Mm -hmm. Yeah. All right. And Dr. Um, Sarah, would like to thank you so much. We wanted to hear mm -hmm. um, the same topic uh, from um, uh, two different sides, though we are still in the, in the same topic. Uh, thank you, Dr. Sarah yeah. Radio, and we hope to see you with us uh, soon in the studio. Thank you. Thank you so much for having me. Thank you. Thank you. And Dr. Mohamed, back to you after a short break. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, um, so we were talking with Dr. Sarah about um, oral hygiene, and she is actually specialized in oral hygiene, and we're talking about the topic from her side. But let's get back to a very important point um, uh, that you mentioned regarding patients being hospitalized uh, and then would make uh, the blood clotting worse and would to, uh, usually the hospital should be a positive thing for people but um, uh, mentioning such a point from um, um, uh, from you doctor would uh, uh, make us interested to know more about this point uh, okay that we see hospitalization mm. uh, or uh, it can increase the risk of uh, blood clot or VTE venous thromboembolism uh, pulmonary embolism or blood clot in the lung is the leading cause of hospital death, leading cause of preventable hospital death. So we can prevent 10% uh, the risk. They say one out of 10 that die in the hospital are related to blood clot. So one out of 10 related to blood clot. It's a preventable, we can prevent. If you speak about uh, all uh, blood clots, all venous thrombo uh, thromboembolism, 60% occur in the hospital setting. Other 40% from different causes, pregnancy, uh, after pregnancy, postpartum, oral contraceptive pills, uh, long haul flight, etc. So 60% are due to hospitalization. So that's very important risk factor. What's the message we need to send? If you get admitted, any, you know, anybody here us, get admitted, please, you have to be proactive. Ask your physician, what's did you uh, uh, request for VTE risk assessment? Mm -hmm. What does it mean? You can negotiate with your doctor, what's my risk? Am I uh, at low risk, intermediate, or high risk? So there is a risk score, scientific risk score, we do it. So that's important, need to be assessed. It should be done by all physicians. Physician is human being, m he might miss it. So right. a patient, we want the patient to be proactive and remind physician, after assessment, if I'm at risk, then what are the available options to prevent blood clot? Do I need only... Like talking to, to your doctor is the safest 
think you can do. Definitely. That's why we always try to increase awareness for the public. Excellent. So the patient knows more about himself, Excellent. knows what questions to ask. But doctor, since we are running out of time, a very brief question, please. A very brief answer regarding the prevention. We've been Excellent. talking about how to prevent the diseases from different sites. So simply and briefly, how can we prevent such a dangerous disease? So early movement of the PID, this is important. We call it uh, mobilization. And there are stockings, elastic compression stockings that improve circulation. And we have uh, medications like, you know, injectable, like needles, heparin. All of these, you know, uh, let's say uh, preventive measures can prevent uh, blood clot in about 90 to 95% of the cases. So we say keep active, keep blood flowing, okay, and stop clot. Mm -hmm. And Dr. Muhammad, um, unfortunately, I'm, in I'm personally interested in this topic. Uh, and I guess the assigned time is not enough, but uh, hopefully we'll talk more regarding this topic uh, in the near future. Uh, thank you for being with us. Thank you for uh, giving us some of the interesting information and also the prevention ways. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Okay, thank you. And thank you, our dear viewers, for uh, being with this uh, segment and hopefully uh, you learned something new, but now we'll take a short break and we'll be back with the trends and the Twitter segment. Stay with us. Mm -hmm.